Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. So you've made yourself a nice cutting board, you've done all the glue ups, you've done all the work to get to this point, and now you think that thing would be awesome with a, a juice groove in it. Now you could set up a jig and use your handheld router and go around that thing, but why risk the router going off course and ruining that, that cutting board? If you've got a Shea Poco or any other kind of CNC and some CarbCo software, you can put an accurate juice groove in that board so simple it makes no sense to risk it and use a handheld router. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy the programming is, and then we're going to go ahead and put a juice groove in a board. Now, wait a minute. I don't have a cutting board, but what I do have are these. And I got these from a local store that's rather big, and they sell a lot. Hint, hint. Big. Sell a lot. But anyway... I'm, gonna not, I'm not even going to take those apart. I'm going to set them on the mill, clamp them down, and I'm going to put a juice groove in a TV tray. That way when you got little ones and they're spilling their juice and stuff on the tray when they're eating in the living room, it won't go all over the floor. So let's go inside the house. Let's get to the computer or the shop that's not the shop, as I like to call it. Let's do some programming. Let's come back out here to the shop and we'll cut the groove. Let's get started. Testing one, two, three getting in the groove okay everybody we're back here in the shop that's not the shop and I'm gonna show you how to make a juice groove in a cutting board in this case in a TV tray but you can apply this to the cutting board because that's where the majority of y'all want to do this so open up a new model simply open a model or a space that's large enough to accommodate the, the cutting board that you have so even if you did a 24 inch by 24 inch work area, that doesn't matter. You just need enough room in here to put your board. Working in inches, put the origin in the center. Click OK. Now in some cases you can put the origin here on the left. If your board is nice and square, you can use the left side origin. However, the ball nose bit the round nose bit that we're going to use will not work with a um, touch block. So you're better off putting your origin right here in the center. Now, if you like to see the origin while you're working, you can go to model, vector, view, I mean, <laughs> go to view, show origin. And as you can see, now the origin is in the center. If you don't want that in there, go to view once more, click origin again, and it removes it. You can always do that just to check yourself and make sure that you have the origin where you need it. All right, moving on. Now here comes the simplicity of this. Let's say you have a cutting board that is uh, 16 by 18 or 14 by 18. It doesn't really matter. Go to the square tool over here on the left, click the square tool, create a square by left clicking and dragging outward, release the button and you have a square. It's not there yet. You've got to come over to this right side and create it in order for that square to actually exist on your workspace. Before you click that though, go to the size area on the side on the drop down and correct to the size dimensions. Let's go with a a uh, 14 inch wide board by 18 inches and I usually work horizontal this is vertical so I'm going to change that because I just don't like to work this way I like to work horizontally across the machine so we're going to change these two to 18 by 14 and that will correct it for us now we have a board that is the proper dimension Click Create, and here comes the easy portion of this. Click on your arrow here on the left. We're going to go to Offset, this tool right here. Click that. Back on the drop-down menu on this side, we need an offset distance. So now how do we determine what that offset distance is? It's very easy. It's a matter of preference, but in my case, I like the juice groove to be inset three quarters of an inch from the edges all the way around i know that my bit or the tool that i'm going to use is a half inch round nose 
I know that half the distance to the center of the bit is one quarter inch. So one quarter inch plus the three quarter inch that I want offset gives me an offset of one inch. Simply put one inch here. You're going to offset inward in this case. Click inward. Come down to the bottom and click offset. That is your juice group. That's all there is to creating the offset for the juice group. Now we'll close out the offset vector tool and let's make some tool paths. Again, relatively simple, but for those of you that are new to this, I'll go through it for you. We're going to go to a contour tool path or a profiling tool path. Now here's where it gets tricky. You want to make sure you do this correctly. You want this button here to be clicked and it should be a, a long tool path. You want your tool to be centered along your line so that the math calculations you've done are correct. Three quarters of an inch inward, the edge of the bit will start cutting. Half of an inch in from that is the center of the bit. Therefore, one inch is the desired length or desired inward offset. Start depth will be zero. Finish depth is another preference, but I find that point two works well. We're going to scroll down and click to, and collect a tool, or select a tool, not collect one. I simply use a half inch ball nose, select that, click on it once more, and here's where you want to be careful, because I have made this mistake and it's rather dramatic. Step over is fine, step down is the important number here. You do not want that half inch round nose diving into your board one half of an inch on the initial pass or it will light you up you will jump back it will be a shocker again i'm warning you with this make sure you pay attention to this number and change that to a more acceptable number of say 0.1 feed rate i like to reduce to roughly 50 and all the rest of this stuff is okay scrolling down safe z height is fine that's 0.1 Let's define the material. That'll be whatever the thickness of your cutting board is. In this case, we'll put in one. Click OK. And we will give it a name. Let's call it Groove, G-R-O-O-V-E. That looks like an R. Let's put an E on the end of it. Calculate now. Close this out. Double click, click on that. Let's simulate the tool path here. We don't need to go through a simulation control bar and show that it's going to go around in a square. We know that. Let's just simulate the entire thing quickly. And there you have it. Push down on your space bar and rotate and you can see that you've got a rather nice juice groove just like that. Now if we go back to tool paths, we can save the tool path. Groove, let's call it groove down here. G-R-O-O-V-E. Again with the R. Click save. Click it once more just for insurance. Yes, I want to override it. Close this out. Let's minimize it. And as you can see, my juice groove is right here. That's all there is to this. There's no mystery as far as the math goes. It's very, very simple. Maybe being new to, to CarveCo and CNC programming, it might sound a little complex, but trust me, it's not. Now let's go back out to the mill and let's apply this to those TV trays. All right, we're back here at the mill now. I've got the tray, and as you can see, it's still assembled on the mill. And right off the bat, I can see that I need to raise this fence because it's just not going to be high enough. So we're gonna do that now. We're gonna raise the fence up a little bit higher with this. This is another fence I've used from time to time. We just put these guys in here, making sure we're not going to hit the screws. We'll line up the edge so it's nice and smooth. Like so. May have to go a little more. Nope, that works good. Sometimes you've got to get a little bit creative with your clamping fixtures. Here I've found a piece of plywood that I've screwed to the center. And because this flexes a little bit, we're going to put two on the outside. Just 
to create the down tension I need to hold this in place. Pretty solid. Just have to deal with this now and we'll be good to go. Okay, so the little thought, pretty simple. Piece of plywood here clamps the front down. We added these two little ears here on top of this snaky looking clamp and solid as a pancake. No, solid as a shifting sand. It's solid, trust me. So you have to go off the center, which you can use an end mill or you can use a V-bit to be even more accurate. Locate center, zero your X and your Y at the center point, raise the machine up, slap that guy in, go back down and touch off the surface to get your Z height. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, let's run this baby. We'll turn on the dust collector and see if I can ruin a TV tray. Well, that was so much fun, we're gonna do it again. See if I can get away with doing this without putting the V-bit back in. Let's see how my eye is here. Well, there you have it, everybody. Two TV trays with a juice groove in them. Oh, good thing I got a juice groove. I'm just kidding. Well, not really. I did spill it. But anyway, I hope you get something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, I hope maybe you learned something. Please give us a like, a share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And we'll catch you on the next one. Whew. Mm. Mm. Oh. So much for children spilling stuff. Sheesh.